Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. La Nina is coming back. It is going to come back sooner than later. This is a quick change. I want to get into what that means for the summer, what that means for hurricanes, and what it means as we even dive into the next winter because this is going to be a quick flip. This is not that typical. Usually we go from El Nino to La Nina a lot slower, and I'll sh show you what we could expect and explain what that means for you as we go forward. Now, this is the broad picture a global look as we work our way into a La Nina cycle. This would be about a year from now by the upcoming winter. We're going to see it transition this summer and then by this winter we should be into a full La Nina and that would mean some spots would be cooler up toward the northern U.S. back toward Canada, drier across parts of the Gulf of Mexico and parts of the Caribbean. I'll break that down. I want to zoom down in just a second but this is what we're seeing and I was talking about this in yesterday's video. We are locked into an El Nino right now. It's uh, an aggressive winter with some uh, big snow makers up toward parts of the U.S and a lot of fronts moving by, clipping by the Caribbean. El Nino, this, this is out through April, and you see here this red shading. That means we're in an El Nino. But quickly, this blue shading here, by the time we get into June, July, and August and kick off the hurricane season, we're going to see a La Nina coming back. The phase in between, usually there's kind of a neutral phase. We're not really El Nino or La Nina. Usually that sticks around for a while. This time it's going to be a quick flip. And this is looking out in time back toward 1800 or 1880, I should say, uh, looking at the La Nina years versus the El Nino years. Usually there's a little gap in between. I know this is confusing. So let me break this down further. This is what usually happens. And then El Nino itself, they don't last too long. We're in one now. It usually lasts about nine to 12 months. So we're kind of typical for that now. A La Nina usually lasts last longer, about one to three years. Well, in between them, you have this neutral phase. And typically, uh, at least on average, that could last a couple years or longer. But this time, we're going to see a quick change. There's almost not a neutral phase. We're going to flip right from El Nino to La Nina. Has this happened before so fast? Well, yes. Looking back in time, that chart I was just showing you, breaking it down, uh, the last uh, quick change was actually back in 2016. We went quickly from an El Nino to a La Nina. And even back in 1998, we did the same thing. We had a quick change and we didn't really have that neutral phase. Sometimes that happens. Uh, uh, the length of the uh, periods, both El Nino and La Nina and the neutral phase, they do vary and we're going to see a quick variation this go around. So what does that mean going forward? Well, as we look ahead, we're going to see La Nina move in this summer. I'll talk about that in a second. And then by the winter, we should be really locked into a La Nina period. Well, that would mean there's that cold Colder air in northern U.S. and much of Canada, colder than average. Drier, though, the jet stream is going to be a little bit more to the north, unlike the El Nino we have now, where that jet is bringing a lot of fronts across the Gulf of Mexico. This would keep everything more to the north. That would mean drier air, say, back toward parts of the Gulf and the northern Caribbean. This would be the breakdown for the upcoming wi uh, winter. If La Nina really takes hold, the northern zones of the Caribbean and up through uh, Florida would be drier than average as we work our way into the uh, winter and then our southern zones you get toward the ABC Islands, Trinidad and Tobago in a La Nina it would actually be a little bit wetter. It is the opposite uh, this winter. We're, we're dealing with a El Nino now, but in a La Nina, it flips around and we're going to see that change. So I'll be highlighting that more going forward. But one of the bigger issues is if this La Nina comes in quickly, well, La Nina means less wind shear out there in the Atlantic Basin. And that means it's more conducive for hurricanes. Wind shear, uh, if you get a system developing a hurricane, wind shear would come across, kind of knock off the thunderstorm tops, the storm tops, so it can't really develop as much. Wind shear is a good thing. We often have that in an El Nino uh, cycle. But with La Nina, we don't have as much wind shear. And that means the probability of hurricanes would be increasing. We'd see a better chance of more tropical storms and more hurricanes deeper into this upcoming hurricane season, which is not a good thing. 
But I do want to mention uh, that doesn't mean we're definitely going to get hurricanes coming at us. Okay, I like to keep any of the hype down. Uh, we're going to hear a lot about this. Uh, these forecasts we're going to see for the upcoming hurricane season, they don't tell uh, where these storms are going to go, where the hurricanes will go. We take it storm by storm on this channel together. I'll let you know about that. But there is an increased chance of named storms as we get into the upcoming season. Now, getting back to what's going on now, well, we're still in our El Nino winter, winter and once again, we have fronts working back toward the Gulf of Mexico uh, with that southern jet stream that has been very active and we are going to see some cooler weather sneaking in to the northern Caribbean next week. Let me show you that here. Here's the big picture. You see one front here trying to take shape actually really back toward Texas right now. Boy in Texas we still need to get some moisture in spots. We're still running some big deficits but watching another system kind of building back through Texas. This is on our Friday. I'll zoom down into the Caribbean in just a second. As we work our way into our Saturday, here comes the front. You see it right here. More rain pulling back toward the southeast U.S. And as this front moves by Saturday into Sunday, it is going to bring some cooler air. This is taking you out in time. There's some of the snow. It'll be a rain-snow mix for parts of uh, New England and then brushing by the Atlantic region of Canada. This is by Sunday afternoon. And then I'll watch the Pacific Northwest and parts of Western Canada, another system moving in here. But then as we go from Sunday into Monday, this pushes off. So we'll see a better chance of rain in Bermuda by Monday. There's some of the snow and even rain in the Atlantic region of Canada by the time we get into Sunday night and Monday. But this front, if you follow on my finger here, this will stretch back through the southern Bahamas, Cuba near Jamaica, close to the Cayman Islands, and all the way back toward Honduras and Belize. So we'll get some cooler air wrapping in behind it. Let me show you that right here as we track the uh, winds and some of the uh, cooler weather. Of course, the choppy seas are going to remain. Winds predominantly out of the east across the Caribbean today, out of the south in the Gulf ahead of our next system. But look at this on your screen here. You see the winds here, these arrows coming out of the northwest. That's the front. This is by tomorrow afternoon. So the front sitting right in here. Winds northwest here, south here, and where that meets, that's where the front is. And then going out in time into Sunday, look at these winds, the northerly flow right back through Cancun, even dropping back toward a Providencia. We could see uh, San Andres seeing that northerly wind by the time we get into Sunday night, Sunday night in the Bahamas. We have some cool to chilly air that's going to work in. And then you see here, this is Monday. The front would be right about here, the dividing line between kind of that southeasterly wind and that northerly flow. Northerly winds in the Cayman Islands, Cuba on Monday. And we'll even get a northerly flow, parts of Haiti and Jamaica. So there's some of the cooler weather that will be sliding in again by early next week with another front. Short term, watching some of the spotty showers, very hit or miss. Some of us get stuck in some, some islands. We've had some substantial rain while others have been too dry. It's just that easterly flow that is going to be with us today into tomorrow. This is by tomorrow. And there's that hint of the next front. It's right here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is our Saturday afternoon. Still those passing showers. St. Lucia, Barbados, Dominica, we may see some. And then as we get into Sunday, the front starts to work into Florida and the northern Bahamas. It would be right here. Increased chance of rain over toward uh, parts of the Yucatan, uh, back through Belize, Guatemala. We'll see a better chance of some showers on Sunday. And then by Monday, the front starts to work across. You see the uh, showers right here. That's the front in the cooler weather that will be moving in back behind it. So the rain chance in Jamaica will pick up a little bit as that front approaches Sunday into Monday and then early next week the cooler weather same thing in the Cayman Islands you see that rain chance getting a little higher as that front gets closer Trinidad and Tobago chance of some passing showers about a 50% chance on our Saturday in Grenada a 40% chance the next few days St. Vincent in the Grenadines we get back toward Barbados rain chance elevate it a 50% chance and still elevate it in St. Lucia periods of showers will be possible Martinique, a 40% chance, and holding on to about a 30 to 40% chance through the weekend. In Dominica, 20 to 30% chance in Guadeloupe. Isolated shower possible in Tigua and Bermuda, a little bit higher on Sunday. 
and a 30% chance on our Saturday, St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat. A 20% chance through the weekend, Anguilla and St. Bart's, and about a 20% chance St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Rain chance 30% in Puerto Rico on Saturday, about a 20% chance on Sunday. A little cooler early next week, especially Monday night in Puerto Rico and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Rain chance 20% through the weekend. 20% chance of a shower in the Dominican Republic. Haiti, rain chance stays very limited. It will be a touch cooler early next week. Bahamas, we'll keep an eye on that front. That'll start to work in on Sunday, and then we get the cooler weather Sunday night into Monday. Turks and Caicos, that front will be nearby on Monday. Cuba, rain chance going up a little bit with the front sliding by on Sunday. Belize, that rain chance you see on Sunday, it will get higher. Belize, the rain chance getting higher. And even by the Yucatan, I may need to raise that a little bit. We'll see that chance of some spotty showers on Sunday. Aruba, rain chance about 20 to 30 percent, and a 20 to 30 percent chance in Curacao and Bonaire as we get into the weekend. Bermuda, we'll keep an eye on Monday. That's when we'll see a better chance of rain with the next front moving in. Costa Rica, 30 to 40 percent chance. Rain chance has trended down in Guyana and Suriname, a 20 to 30 percent chance as we get through the weekend forecast. Venezuela, we're looking at a 20 percent chance. So a busy pattern for this time of year. And of course, looking ahead, a strong El Nino right now, but La Nina returning late this summer. That means less wind shear and a higher chance of hurricanes. But there are other factors as well. It's not just El Nino. It's not just La Nina. I mentioned we don't know necessarily where a storm will go until it does develop. And of course, we need to see how much dry air will be out there and keeping an eye on those water temperatures as we get into the upcoming hurricane season. And in the short term, of course, monitoring those earthquakes. So thanks for being with me. I'll try to get through the comments throughout the day. Thank you for sharing this information, taking the time to subscribe. Have a great weekend ahead.